Yeah. So we are into the second session. I'm very sorry I couldn't come in on Monday. And uh, in the second session, what we're going to be doing is reading and reflecting on texts. And what we will do is plunge into reading because that's what I told you we will do next this time. So the first thing that I want you to think about and tell me is uh, what when you read newspaper headlines, uh, what is it that you read? Uh, you know, for instance, the coronavirus or India wins the trophy, etc. Are headlines in the past tense or are headlines in the present tense? That's a question for you. I'm not going to answer it. So you will have to answer. I'm going to check whether. Are there chats? No, people have still not done it. Did you not hear my question? The question is, newspaper headlines are Nandi they usually, in the past? Yeah. They're usually me. in the past tense. They're usually in the past tense? Headlines? Okay. Let's go and check a few. Unati, uh, other than Unati, can others hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So Aditi says both. And I'm going to uh, show you a few times of India new or any actually we can just check out. But uh, what if we take up some of the newspaper headlines today, for instance, right? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, both, why do you say that, Aditi? Aditi, why do you say that it is both? Can you give an example? So, ma'am, uh, uh, past tense, because uh, like what happened uh, the previous day, what happened, so that's for the pa past tense. And um, uh, and uh, present tense, uh, tense, I feel, because so, uh, so now it is going to happen. So, uh, so, so because like, for example, uh, um, hmm. Uh, so, uh, so now, now currently this is happening. So, if a headline is like this, so I think both. Can newspapers, okay, let's take up this. Can newspapers have past tense? Uh, I mean, do they ever report something that's happening currently? Or do they always report something that has already happened? They report usually what's ha already happened because the news needs to be printed in the morning. Um, and that's the reason why I said that they are in the past tense because the news has already occurred or in the recent past, as you call it. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why I said past. Okay. Actually, they are generally presented in past tense but uh, what Shian said uh, just happened incidences or events means uh, recent past very recent past presented in the present tense why do you say recent how can recent past be presented in the present tense for example uh, recent news like uh, yesterday's uh, covid 19 patients uh, count count was this this much like um, mm -hmm. count is this much but it is the news which uh, which has which has happened yesterday but it is presented uh, in current um, or mm -hmm. ma'am i would like to add to the pali so if uh, even if there is past tense there are also news that can be presented in future tense like there could be predictions of numbers uh of example how many more are going to be added to the count 
or something like that okay my question is uh can you see these headlines uh can you see my screen i think it is yes. Yes. sorry 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 yes. uh, reduce it a bit to ensure you are able to see yeah so yes now obviously i just chose something that is non india but we can also do india based articles uh, to share all right uh so this one if you're reading through these articles uh it says liberal media bias on full display that's the headline us panel report report biased baseless and motivated don't insult now this is a way of saying why so many people are biased to ignore the risk of covid uh china australia rift deepens over call uh, for covid inquiry and we can take this across and just say newspaper headlines around the world if my computer takes too much time then i will switch my internet to my cell phone and i'll work on my cell mm, okay so i'll stop sharing this yeah so newspaper headlines today if you cont- if you look at them uh you would find again something that is very interesting so i want you to pay attention to the headlines and we just discussed that uh, what these headlines uh talk about right so mm, i'll take off this is taking a long time so i'm going to just my stops sharing my screen stop sharing okay uh going to use my cell phone and i think you should be able to see this from there uh Yes, somehow not able to do this. Uh, okay, can't can hear you. All right, one second, one second. Okay, let's see. Maybe this will work. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So if you look at the headlines, you will find that. they will literally talk about this entire element in concept you can't see it. yes uh shyam that's right in the headlines and you can check this out yourself by the way you don't have to trust me at all in fact you shouldn't always verify uh a lot of the uh headlines and stuff that comes in is primarily they would be in the present tense the major news so page 1 sports page page 2 page 3 would all have um uh, you know news in the present tense so pm modi says s a y s um uh, okay india wins w i n s right not one 
Absolutely, Shion. So why do they use the present tense is a good question to ask when the news is all in the past. So, you know, monsoon hits Kerala. It always hits Kerala and then comes and, uh, you know, uh, comes towards us. So monsoon hits Kerala. How does that and why is that they use the present tense? For newspaper headlines, uh, whereas for everything else, they do not use the present tense. And, and if you notice, some of it would be like virus news speak. Um, okay. Corona uh, care homes catastrophe. Or they will just not use any tense. But, or they will say something like back in, back in uh, number 10, if this is uh, UK, for instance. So a lot of it is actually in the basis uh, is based on the effect that you have coronavirus or whatever other news in the present tense. So I'm going to go back to the text that we had and say, why is it that uh, we use present tense? And Shion, you're right, they might want to attract attention. Now, my question is this, why do you think that the audience is attracted to present tense? Ma'am, is it because no one likes a delayed news? Uh, yes, uh, it is because no one likes the delayed news. But what else could there be? I mean, delayed news is, it is delayed news, isn't it? I mean, everyone is, everyone is aware that it is delayed news. Everyone is aware that it has been reported, uh, you know, at least it has 12 hours passed, if not more. So everyone is aware. So then whom are we fooling? Oh, Ma'am, maybe right. add, uh, that because they uh, gave the news in present tense, uh, the reason, uh, it's our tendency, if it's a past, then we really don't pay that much attention to that news. This is my just opinion. Like, if it's happened two, three months ago, I'm not going to concern about that. So maybe that is the one reason. Mm -hmm. So... If I if you give me a newspaper headline with the present tense, then I will consider it because I think it is in the present, but uh, may not be. So newspapers basically fool us. <laughs> I'm asking, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, yeah. uh. Uh, no, actually, so now I'm, I'm staying in Pune. So yesterday I got the news because here was raining too much heavily. So a few of the trees broken and some towers. So yeah, I'll pay attention to that news. Yeah, it happened yesterday. But if there is a, any chances now during lockdown, definitely I'm not going anywhere. But if there is a chances to go in that area, I will take that precautions because it's happening just yesterday. Mm -hmm. Could be. I am not denying it at all. Uh, but this is one of the things that newspaper headlines talk about. And I'm going to talk also about the changing structures. It is things that we are always conscious of, but we are not always, uh, or we use appropriately, but we are not very conscious of how and why we use it. So, uh, yeah, sure, uh, Yukti. Uh, see you. Thank you. Ma'am, yeah. big day because... Um, they need to excite the audience about whatever is being read online or maybe on your newspaper. So that's the reason why it's in the present tense. Like if it's in the present tense, I want to know more about it. I could want to know more about it. I'm not denying the fact that I would want to know more about it. But the question is then why use a present tense when your news is definitely in the past? and shouldn't the content of the news really matter and and wouldn't that be adequate to uh, you know uh, present your news those are questions to ask and those are aspects to consider when you are uh, dealing with any such thing so it's not just about newspaper headlines by the way it could be a news report it could be about uh, reports that we write 
uh, you know, the Government of India rights reports and uh, WHO rights reports and UN rights reports. And some of these reports are collated over a period of time. And by the time the report comes, it is like three months after the study that they are writing the report. But the report, pre the title is present tense, isn't it? It gives you a sense of now. And then you read inside and you're like, so you did the study last to last year, like you did the study in 2018. That is the latest data that you have. And then you are telling me something about it now. Mm, let's think. OK, so those are kinds of ideas that you would have to um, wonder. And, and think about. And so, yeah, those are con considerations that we will keep in mind. So now keep in mind the fact that we are dealing with tenses and the fact that I have asked you why. So we go to this aspect here, and I want you to consider tenses from this angle. We, uh, we use a lot of these words. I mean, they are familiar to you, aren't they? These words on the screen. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So um, why do we say have eaten or ate or had eaten all of these three, the top three? All right. Sorry, my fault. Uh, why do we say had eaten or ate or has eaten when we could just say ate? I ate an apple. I had eaten an apple. I have eaten an apple. What's the difference? Ma'am, we are in the continuous and the perfect tense. So uh, when one is stating the sentence, it may be to add emphasis on what is being said, unlike it. So, Mm, can't I just say I just ate an apple or I ate an apple four days ago? Would that be wrong? Not really. <laughs> so very irritating, isn't it? Uh, so think about it. If I give you two sentences, and I'm going to do these as questions and probing, right? If I give you two sentences, one which says, I reached the bus stop, but the bus left. Okay, I'm typing it in. I reached the bus stop. Uh, but the bus left. Can you get into the bus? This is the sentence. I reached the bus stop, but the bus left. Can you get into the bus stop? Can you get into the bus, not the bus stop? Sorry. Of course, you reached the bus stop. No. 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 Marisa, are you a no. true Mumbaiker? A true Mumbaiker will get into the bus. Stop. No. Like, you see so many people on the road running after a bus. Why are they running after a bus? Um, if you put it that way, then yes, they can get into it. But I think on first reading, you just assume that the bus has left and, um, and yeah. you missed it. So... Yeah, so let me give you another question. I reached the staff room. I mean, I'm sorry for the uh, things. I reached the staff room uh, and the but uh, to turn in my assignment. But the teacher left. OK, now does this mean that the teacher left uh, the assignment? 
does it mean that the teacher had left without taking the assignment? I think teacher just left the room. I don't know. Is she a bad <laughs> teacher? Or are you a bad student? Think about the sentence, isn't it? I mean, I reached the staff room to turn in my assignment, but the teacher left. Now, do you assume that the teacher left without taking the assignment? Or do you assume that the teacher did not see? Do you assume that the teacher was very annoyed with the students? Do you assume that the teacher was a very cruel, cruel person? Or do you think that the students were very bad people that, you know, I saw you and I just left the room? There are so many possibilities in this. Is there a possibility that I also told the teacher, please take my assignment and she did take it? Like she maybe did not notice that I was coming in and she was leaving and I could stop her. These are actions that we talk about in terms of understanding that they leave a lot of space for interpretation, isn't it? Like I reached the bus stop but the bus left. I reached the coffee shop as he was shutting down the, you know, the, the shop. And it could be that I got him to serve me another coffee, or it could be that I didn't, you know. So think about that as parallel actions versus another sentence, which is, I reached the airport, but the plane had taken off. What about this one? I reached the airport, but the plane had taken off. Can you get it into the plane now? Right. I reached the bus stop and the bus, but the bus had taken off. Uh, the bus had left. Now you have to be Superman. Now you have to be Rajnikanth. Now you can't say. I mean, every day we go to the station, not now in coronavirus times, but every day. Otherwise, if you go to a Mumbai central station, Mumbai, any Mumbai local station, and you try and see people, there is always, you know, it's a Raj Simran scene every single day where there's someone who is trying to get into the train and there is four or five, you know, Samaritans who are so helpful and they reach out their hand and they drag this person in, right? It is a scene every single time. And that is the train takes off as you reach the station versus the train had taken off as you reach the station. Different ideas, uh, yeah. So those are some things that you will have to consider when you are uh, looking at these elements of tenses. Keep this in mind that then my question to you is, if I tell you that this is one action, you know, I had eaten, I have eaten, what is it about the, mm, why do you think we have this perfect sense? Why do we have this? Why do we have past perfect, present perfect, and future perfect? But why do we have a perfect past?
Try to be helpless. Okay, that typing. You can also talk. It's all right, I think. One or two. The time of the event occurring is unsure, so we use a present tense. Is that the reason? Not necessary. Sorry, I want to provide food. food. Is it necessary that uh, Or not really important. That's very interesting. Okay, that's good. Marisa and Dipali are typing. I'll just wait for one more minute and then we will go to the next point. Think about when do you use the past tense? Think about when do you use the perfect? Mm -hmm. To firmly establish that the event happened? Yeah, okay, not sure. It is the thing. All right. Now, I'll give you another example. All right. We can look at it from a viewpoint of mm, focusing on these elements. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, let's take up this enabler like right here and talk about what is it that you are reading when you are when you are talking about it here what is it that you are seeing i had eaten i ate and i have eaten all right we'll just take these three first now think about when you are mm, visiting someone's house right and um, when people, when, and, and in India, it's always the case that people will feed you a lot. And so think about the fact that when you have had two samosas or whatever, you are uh, saying, no, I have had the samosa versus I, or, or let's take tea. I drank tea versus I have drunk tea. Where will you and when will you be forced to drink tea more. Think about that. So let me rephrase it in Hindi as well. If whatever language you use, it doesn't matter whether it's English or Hindi or Marathi or whatever, French, Italian, whatever it is. Um, chai pee thi, main chai pee chuki hoon. When will you be forced to drink tea? Like extra force. Um, I, 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 I
वेरियस मैं चाय पी चुकी हूँ is like they don't tell you anything really yeah i mean they will but it is not as forceful right i will wait for more of the typed answers but think about this in your own life now is someone sitting there and saying hmm past perfect they have used actually the past tense simple past tense in many chai pee thi they have used Present perfect in me chai pee chuki hu. Hmm. I will force the person who has used simple past. Obviously, no one is sitting down and thinking through tenses when they are, but they are reacting to the tenses used, right? They are reacting to the fact that you have said that I have had chai pee thi versus someone saying me chai pee chuki hu. I have drunk tea versus I drank tea. There is someone who is forcing and who is thinking and who is reacting to the use of these tenses. Uh, similarly, when you know, when parents and teachers love telling children this, I had told you, right? What yes. does that mean? Why can't we just say I told you? Why do we have to say I had told you? What are they implying there? Uh, they are adding extra emphasis to whatever they are saying. Uh, yeah, they could be. They could be adding extra. Mm -hmm. It establishes that what else they did at some time in the past. And yes, they are like establishing that it happened in the past. Yes, definitely. What else might they be doing? Assurity. Yes. Uh, some of you are typing and chatting that in, and that's very good. Things to be told before and now repeating. No, they are not repeating. They are like, "Many apna kam kia. Tum ne nahi kia. You did not do your work. I did. I had told you. You did not pay attention. I had given you the no homework. You did not do it. Hello. Yes." The exact time of the action is not present, but still the emphasis on the action is there. Like I had yes. told. Correct. So that's a very good reason. So there are three reasons why we use the perfect, and I will give you these. The perfect uh, is whether it's perfect past or perfect, uh, you know, uh, perfect present or perfect future. There are three reasons why we use them. uh one of the reason and i'm typing this in i'm i've not been able to get the white code in but i will definitely push this into the slide is the perfect simple is used for the first reason is as you pointed out emphasis so there is an emphasis in completion of action uh you know i want to say that this action is completed mai chai pee chuki hu i don't want to go back there emphasis of completion of action so mai chai pee chuki hu i don't want to go back to this part the second one is to indicate what you guys had been pointing out that there is a sequence of actions but the difference between saying i um, you know i i reached the bus stop versus i had reached the bus stop is that each time that someone uses mai ye kar chuki hu there is a intended or indicated second reaction let me give you one example can you tell me how you announce people come to your house and you have to announce that to your family so someone has rung the doorbell and you have to tell the tell your family that you know there are guests so how do you say that 
what will you say will you say guest arrived has arrived you will say guest has guest have arrived mehman aa chuke hain or will you say mehman aaye aaye the aa chuke hain hmm in hindi sometimes we might say mehman aaye hain but generally when we are saying mehman aaye hain you are actually telling someone on the phone ki you know mere yahan mehman aaye hain i can't so guests are there so you know don't disturb me but when you are announcing it to your family you generally say mehman aa chuke hain are wo pahunch chuke hain think about every school scenario where children are out there the teacher has come the teacher has come the teacher has come what is the action of what is the reaction of that they all are doing that no the teacher has come that's what they say yeah what, what do they mean there is always that one scout on that staircase jiska kaam hai ki teacher aa rahi hai ki nahi pata kare and then the, he has to come in and announce he or she and says that so why do they say that what happens when you say that it's a indicator that the teacher is coming yes what do the students do as a result of it how urgent the action is <laughs> okay but what do the students do as a result of it why do we say mehman aa chuke hain now what is the you know there are certain indicated actions as a result of it mehman aa chuke hain ab to chai banao matlab abhi chai banao abhi to tv band karo abhi ghar you know thoda uh, apne aap ko uh, theek karo pani leke do whatever it is mehman aa chuke hain has certain implied indicated secondary actions the nurse in the clinic when she says the doctor has left the hospital in in the clinic when she is saying that you basically the idea is that the indication is that the doctor will arrive think about every single time that friends call you up and are talking to you and when they are talking to you they are asking you mm, oh so where are you and you're like oh i have left why do you say i have left it will take you one more hour to reach but you will be like i have left because you are indicating that you will reach soon so these are elements of why we use the perfect tense you know we use the perfect tense like bachcha wo jab aake bolta hai the teacher has come the teacher has come the teacher has come it's basically everyone in the in that you know you you know how the class will be right you know that suddenly someone will go to the blackboard and erase everything you know that someone will go in and you open their book they will clean up the floor with paper balls and all of it they will sweep them under the desk or put them in the dustbin and suddenly they will pretend that they are a very nice class because the no child has told them ki ye sab karo but the moment i have said the teacher has come there are these implied secondary actions and when parents say that i had told you it's basically like listen i did my part of the job there the second reactions to it which you were supposed to do do them i think someone is typing something i'm happy to take questions or if you have reactions to this is it clear like why we use a perfect yes 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 ma'am yeah. i yes, want i want you to think about tense because tense actually in a way organizes information for us you know tense is an organizer of information and when we are reading and reflecting on text it is important to understand how subconsciously we are reacting to it you know koi bikhari ko bhi agar hum bolte hain main chanda wahan pe de chuki hu that bikhari is going to not come and irritate you when someone is on the phone there are these you know do not disturb calls where people are hounding you for donation they uh, you tell them i gave money uh, you know versus i had given money and they automatically process the information ki yahan pe dal nahi galegi you know i had given money chalo we will cut the call i gave money ma'am 
Yes, but this is another one. Can you please, you know, for this consideration and this case, can you do it? They are not processing it as tense, but they are reacting to the tense. And that is one of the ways that you can think about how we can use tense to, uh, subs, you know, to understand it. So this is the perfect, whether it is the future perfect, I have not given the future timeline, but you can understand this is all the past, the four columns, and then the present, and then the future. So the second part of it that I would like to ask you about is uh, the continuous, the simple continuous. Why do we use the simple continuous? Like I was eating versus I am eating versus I will be eating. I mean, all of these, not versus, but they are examples. Why can't I just say I eat? Why do I have to say I am eating? Action is in progress, yes. So what is the difference between saying I am living in Mumbai versus I live in Mumbai? Absolutely. So what is the difference between saying I am living in Mumbai and I live in Mumbai? But I live in Mumbai is also currently happening, no? Mm. Whoever RM is, yeah, Pali. Yes. Okay, currently I'm living in Mumbai, but I always live in Mumbai. Okay, someone has done their geography textbook very well. The earth is, is we don't ever study it as the earth is rotating, right? We study it as the earth rotates. So, yes. But is it wrong to say I, when I'm living in Mumbai, currently I'm living in Mumbai. Is it We are living in Mumbai for a long time. But if I'm a tourist, can't I say, oh, I am in Rome? Do I have to say I am visiting Rome? Let us take another aspect. Live and living is this, right? So you're saying it's a longitude of action versus the action and all of it. I play uh, cricket for four hours. I played cricket for four hours. And I was playing cricket for four hours. What is the difference in these two? They both are saying the right thing. They are grammatically right to say, I played cricket and I was playing cricket. Played, I think uh, you have already done the action, mm -hmm. but I was playing me. Abhi, it's a little bit crazy. I don't know. 
हिंदी में भी बोल सकते हैं क्रिकेट खेल रही थी चार घंटे के लिए मैं क्रिकेट खेल रही थी वर्सेस मैंने चार घंटे के लिए क्रिकेट खेला सेम प्रॉब्लम क्वेश्चन रिमेन्स द सेम या अ सो शी यू नो द एक्शन वाज हैपनिंग जस्ट इन द पास्ट नो बिकॉज़ वाज हैपनिंग डज नॉट टेल मी दैट वाज हैपनिंग स्टिल टेल्स मी इट इज इन द पास्ट सो I don't see so when you say i was playing cricket for 4 hours uh, something else was also happening at the time so you are using this uh, very nice so sense. yes we can definitely so one of the things that you're saying is the use of uh, simple continuous which is what this is uh is that uh, it could be something else was happening you know that's what you're saying yes ma'am right uh so there could be one simultaneity of action definitely but think about this other element all right uh where we talk of the fact that uh simultaneity of action is one definitely so it was raining when i went to the party uh or something of that sort okay so yes definitely but think of something else mm i will go back to the children versus parents thing uh it's not just about simple past and present it's also about present continuous like i am living and i i live it is about uh, future i will be living versus i will live you know there are different things that come through but think about uh, so let me give you an example uh every horror story okay every single horror story uh it was raining she was walking down the road the lights were flickering the dog was barking in the distance the trees were swaying in the breeze there was a car rushing down the road click what do you think happens felt like something something is happening like experience we are experiencing something right and every thriller and horror story has this no like if you yes. say uh, i was walking down the road when i saw an accident or i was walking down the road when i saw um uh, uh, you know my best friend so the idea is that you would always have a possibility of interruption i was walking down the road when i saw the accident so chalna band kar diya maybe you saw it i was cutting vegetables where i was uh, cutting vegetables when i cut my finger uh i was um, sleeping when the phone bell rang okay uh so these are definitely uh you know uh aspects where you're thinking ki shayad shayad uh, action ruk jaye jo kar rahe the right duration uh, and the other one is when i'm looking and i'm going to be a little bit rushed about it because we have so much more to cover but think about all of these these are the three reasons why we use a simple continuous one is what you pointed out simultaneity of actions the other is a possibility of interruption so every single television serial will have this you know that the 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 person putting chai putting uh uh you know uh, poison in the chai it takes like a week for them uh, she was in the kitchen and she went towards the stove and someone came into the room break she was taking the poison out of the out of her purse she heard footsteps break uh, she put the drops of poison and a cat came in as she was putting them break for the entire day now we go to the next day you know the chai takes so long for it to be made to go to the person and and 
maybe kill the person or whatever it it's like a week long thing but everything is cut at action and that is an important aspect of what a simple continuous does because this is what horror stories thrillers use they make you feel that this is um a, a continuous uh, action that comes in that's one the second is why i'm missing emphasis of duration of action think about every single time that um Okay, I'll go back to children and parents episode. Uh when you are talking on the phone or when your parents are when when as you as children if children are playing, right? And parents come, do they do they ever say, "Oh, you played for 2 hours?" Or do they say, "You were playing for 2 hours, abhi to padhai karo." Which one? First or second? I'm going to start doing polls on this from next class. The second one, right? Now, most that. of the time, second one. <laughs> most of the time, the second one. Now, change. Let's switch the activity. The activity is that the child studied for two hours. Do they ever say you were studying for two hours, or do they say you studied for two hours? In this second which one? one? The second okay. one. The second <laughs> one. But this one. हाँ, but इसमें तो second one is a simple past. उसमें तो first one is the, I mean the second one was a simple continuous. तो आपको पता है ना कि मैं कहाँ पे जा रही हूँ? Like you know, you know तुम खेल रहे थे दो घंटे के लिए. तुम इतने देर से बात कर रहे थे. Versus you study for two hours only. It's like this is only kind of scenario. and that is the other aspect the simple continuous basically emphasizes duration of action and the duration of action is something else right it so when i'm saying i was playing for 4 hours i won't say it like that i would say i was playing for 4 hours you yeah, this is what happens when some you know i tell my students this is what you must be doing after my lectures you know we sat through the lecture for 2 hours we were sitting there for 2 hours we were being tortured for 2 hours it's basically whenever i want to emphasize but you watch a 4 hour film it will be a uh, i just saw a film you know i saw this wonderful film or something like that but whenever you're feeling tortured it becomes like this humongous long exercise and that is emphasis of duration of action and so those are important aspects to keep in mind and study uh i think these are useful to have so those are the three reasons for a continuous there is only one reason for the um, perfect continuous had been eating this is not there in indian languages uh there is nothing which says mai khana kha chuki rahi thi okay or mai khana rahi chuki thi whatever i mean whichever order you want to say it there is nothing that says that so um let me ask you this i was sleeping first sentence i was sleeping when the doorbell rang okay second sentence i had been sleeping when the doorbell rang which one of these enables you to understand that you definitely woke up when the doorbell rang sentence 1 i was sleeping when the doorbell rang sentence 2 i had been sleeping when the doorbell rang definitely definitely woke up had been sleeping Yes, had been sleeping. Second, as uh, some of you are typing in, correct. So uh, this is an important element to keep in mind. This is why in the uh, in in the present tense, uh, in sorry, not the present, in the simple continuous. When I say I was sleeping when the doorbell rang, I could have woken up. I could have continued sleeping and ignored the doorbell. there is i had been sleeping means i definitely got interrupted so the perfect continuous which that is what it is is the one that is used only to indicate that the action had been going on for some time 
emphasize the duration of action as in the continuous and emphasize completion of action as in the perfect. That is why we use it. Okay, so for everything else, we use the simple. We use the simple present or the simple past or the simple future, right? Why have I focused and spent like, you know, 40 minutes on this exercise is for the next uh, activity somewhere that we will be looking at and reading where we would be focusing on how these organize information for us, right? And which kinds of structures in narrative, what are the structures I should use in order to, um, uh, you know, think about the past and the present? So let me ask you one more question in terms of this. Um, can you remember, I know 12 o'clock, 12 so it's not a bad time to ask you food questions. Uh, in uh, menu cards, when they describe the, uh, you know, describe the ingredients and the process of making the food, they describe the food. How do they use it? Give me examples. Can you give examples? Ha, huh, yeah, we can, Shion. We can do it, but we just I just need to complete this part. Okay. Ma'am, can you take a break. video question, please? My question is, in a um, restaurant, when you are having a menu card and you need food described, you know, so say, I don't know, palak paneer or something, and, and the, there's a description of the food. How is the food described? Can you give one example? Tossed in spinach gravy, absolutely, something like that. Chopped finely, garnished with something, okay? I'll be very quick about this before we get into the next one. <laughs> Marinated, yes. So, uh, uh, think about a travelogue, okay? The travelogue has something where you're talking about the breeze and the mountains and all of it. Do they say the mountains stubbled? Or do they say the mountain, towering mountains? Ma'am, can you repeat that? The mountains towered, T-O-W-E-R-E-D, versus the towering mountains. Towering. Towering mountains. Right? And these are things that you will have to keep in mind about structures and tenses because every single aspect will come through here in terms of also your writing. So some of this that we are doing is about how we are processing information unconsciously. A lot of this you know. I mean, of course, before I asked you these questions, you were using perfect and continuous and simple correctly and perfectly, I'm sure. But it's also trying to think about what is the effect that comes in. So I am going to, uh, uh, you know, give you that five minutes break that Shion asked for. Uh, but I am going to say that we will come back to this part. Okay, so this will be where now we go into biases and how these biases are also organizing information for us. Uh, and the reason why we are doing all of this is that there is a function of language, which is to organize our experiential and interpersonal meanings into a linear, coherent whole. And that's why I have been talking about tenses, why we will deal with bias and sentence structures, and today's class will be on that only. So five minutes, Shion, is that, uh, is that what you wanted? So we come back, it is 12.05 now, 12.10, right? And we can, I'm right here, so anyone who wants to continue and ask me questions, I am here. But for the rest, you can take a break.
Okay, so I think uh, you're all there, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Start. So are you able to see the screen? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, okay, all right. So as, as that is the point, then I'm going to start off from this part here um, because we did so much of grammar. We will do a little bit of reading in a sense of where the biases come from, all right? So wait. Okay, I'm just one second. I'm just going to stop sharing screen from here. Okay, so I hope now that you will be able to see my mobile phone screen because that is what I'll have to go to to get us to read the text uh, that I wanted. So, so this is the text. Can, I hope you can read it. Is this better or was the oh, audio one enough? Class, you need to let me know. Ma'am, that is fine. This is it's fine. Legible, ma this is fine. You can read, right? Okay. So, um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to start reading out along with y'all. Uh, me, not no Oxford done. Me, a simple immigrant from Clapham Common. I didn't graduate. I immigrate. But listen, Mr. Oxford Dunn, I am a man on the run, and a man on the run is a dangerous one. I ain't have no gun, I ain't have no knife, but mugging the Queen's English is the story of my life. I don't need no axe to split up your syntax. I don't need no hammer to mash up your grammar. I'm warning you, Mr. Oxford Dunn, I'm a wanted man, and a wanted man is a dangerous one. Then accuse me of assault on the Oxford Dictionary. Imagine a concise, peaceful man like me. Then want me to serve time for inciting rhyme to riot. But I'm taking it quiet down here in Clapham Common. I'm not a violent man, Mr. Roxford Dunn. I only armed with me human breath, but human breath is a dangerous weapon. So make them send one big word after me. I ain't serving no jail sentence. I slashing suffix in self-defense. I bashing future with present tense. And if necessary, I'm making the Queen's English accessory to my offense. And that is the end of the poem. Why do you think this poem was written? It's written by John Agard. 
What do you think of the poem? He's poking fun at poem. He's yeah. poking fun at how complicated the English language can be and all the rules that we need to follow to um, True. speak and write correctly. True. I mean, it's like I'm an immigrant and I have my human breath and I'm going to do it. Yes. What do you think is the race of this person? Um, it sounds like uh, someone who immigrant so probably an immigrant from africa not sure yeah why do you say africa why couldn't it be australia or new zealand um i i think the early african immigrants um uh, they would speak like this yeah so in a sense when you're looking at any kind of language there are so many things that you suddenly deduce right like you just now talked about the geography of where the person may come from uh you talked about the fact that this person is uh you know there is a political idea and ideology behind it uh how old do you think the person may be um I, I I'm not sure of that, ma'am. Do you think the person can be a twelve-year-old child? No, um, the person is an adult. Why uh, do you say adult? Um, because of I think the language he uses is not a language a twelve-year-old would use. Correct. Even if his grammar and wasn't correct, his um, uh, um, the the things that he was talking about was complex. Absolutely, uh, whoever R M of R is, yes, he calls himself a man. I am a man on the run. He says, "I didn't graduate. I immigrate." So obviously, he's someone who should have been graduated. Who should be about twenty years of age. So yes, and what you were pointing out, he is someone who is very aware of the criminality of what he is doing, which a child would not be aware of. So he is like, you know, I am mugging the Queen's English is my job, and it is a nice pun on the word mugging because it could be that you mug up, or it could be that you attack. Like uh, you know, thieves who may mug you on the street, so um, uh, attack you on the street, and so he is uh, very aware and conscious of that. So there are so many things that you have deduced, even if not consciously, subconsciously, about the person. And uh, Rebecca, all right, I'll try and remember that. Yes, uh, so. and and he is very conscious of man peaceful man imagine a concise peaceful man like me them want me to serve time for inciting rhyme to riot but i'm taking it quiet down here in clap and common where do you think this place is it's uk because yes. he's saying queen's uh, language english yes it is in uk and it is yeah, there even though you may not know geographically that it is uh, in uh, england because you talk about oxford and you talk about uh, queen's english you somehow associate england with this place and it is in england and clapham common is a place where a lot of the immigrants from africa assemble but uh, you know he he seems to uh, be quite uh, what what kind of personality do you think this guy has i think he is a learned one but uh, uh because he don't know the pure english so called pure english of the uk mm -hmm. uh people over there are like uh, 
uh, treating him little uh, lower than the people or uh, natives who are there. So he's saying these things like I'm mugging up, um, mugging the I'm mugging Queen's up language or Queen's English and so Ma'am, according to me, I feel that uh, he's a more uh, outspoken person because he can express himself even if it's through the poem. Um, mm -hmm. And also he's, um, he knows that he may be, um, he may be uh, caught up for all of the writing that he's done, but he's still um, willing to take that up. <laughs> in order to express yeah. himself. So he's someone who's quite aware of the kind of, uh, you know, and does he seem to have a sense of humor? Yes, he does. Definitely, ma'am. Uh, at <laughs> one point, he's say, uh, uh, saying that I'm a peaceful person like me, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah. And then, how is that sense of humor? Lots of inferential thinking happening. Exactly what I want you to do. <laughs> Being yeah. even um, means uh, calling himself as a peaceful person here is also talking about uh, using guns and uh, not using guns and some uh, hammer. And, yeah, so he is uh, like, I don't need no axe to split up your syntax. I don't need no hammer yeah. to mash up your grammar. I ain't it's have no gun, I ain't have no knife. Yes, it's but he's talking the Queen's English and things. And he's, he's, he's also being very careful in terms of, he constantly uses these paradoxical statements where he says, uh, imagine a concise, peaceful man like me. In fact, that's one of the longest, center, uh, you know, the longest lines in the poem is exactly when he is talking of concise and peaceful. And then he says, I'm not a violent man, but I'm armed with my human breath. And my human breath is a dangerous weapon. So he is kind of threatening, but with very, it's, it's a tongue in cheek kind of humor. And, and so make them send one big word after me. I ain't serving no jail sentence. I slashing suffix in self-defense. I bashing future with present tense. And if necessary, I making the Queen's English accessory to my offense. And this is a kind of uh, what, what Hethel was pointing out as, you know, there's a lot of inferential, uh, you know, thinking that is happening. This is exactly what it is. Uh, I'm all, I was asking with certain questions and then you were instinctively answering with certain responses, all based on how you experienced your, uh, you know, how you experienced the poem. And the way that you're talking about experiencing the poem is what but at all will uh, talk about when they say that, uh, there is a textual function of language and that textual function of language is to organize our experiential and our interpersonal meanings into a linear and coherent whole. And so we always do this. But the one other aspect that why I was doing tenses with you all first and then I came to this poem second is when we talk about what is a linear and coherent whole, it is organized by us in our brain, by ourselves. It is, uh, so not every one of us is going to think about organizing it in the same structure. You would have had tea at five o'clock with me. I would have had tea also. But the way that we might tell when we go to a guest's to, to, uh, you know, to one of our uh, family friend's house is I may say, I had drunk tea and you may say, I drank tea. And both of us are right, but both of us are presenting a very different understanding of the world. And that is an important aspect to remember in language that the authors to a large extent are organizing information for us and tempting us to go on these pathways. You know, detective fiction is all about trying to use, uh, is to tease you 
with certain hints and then tell you, oh, but I never told you, you know. And so we will try and take up those passages as well. I want to go to another one uh, of the poems, which is also uh, an in interesting aspect. But before I do that, because we will run out of time, and I knew we would run out of time, so some of this is also activities for you to do. So um, I'm going to try and take up this element one second. Yeah. Uh, these are links and they are open access. We can take up this. I just want to go to one of these because I think it is very easy for you to access. Um, now, this is an entire analysis of discourse that talks of what I was doing is at the sentence level. This has taken an entire discourse level of a WhatsApp forward, right? I'm sure we are all getting a lot of WhatsApp forward. So this was based on uh, you know, during the lockdown, the way that these messages are structured. And this is how one of the analysis is talking about and very clearly says it is non-political. But those who have other political opinions, I'm sorry, I'm just using it as a structure of how people organize something as simple as a WhatsApp forward. So the first thing that it contains if you are looking at all these kinds of citizens, uh, how they are forwarding these messages, it appeals to the reader's pride in national and cultural heritage. The second part that it does is it claims is supported by prestigious scientific organization, astrological events or philosophical reasoning. It's always, you know, some hot shot person has said something. It uses a lot of the first person personal pronouns and it has a germinal idea. That is, it, it is just worded in such a way that it is very essential and it is uh, very easy to decode. And there are emojis of the national flag and namaste, om, etc. My question to you, do you agree? Do the WhatsApp forwards on... Uh, you know, why we should all be in the lockdown. Did they contain this? This was written a month ago, by the way. So maybe the current ones don't contain this. Do you think this is there? And if it is there, why do you think it is there? I can maybe show you a WhatsApp. Rebecca and Hitler are typing, so I'll go and wait. I mean, the answers are already given out, but my question is more like, do you agree? What is your response? How do you think this takes in? Because when we are talking about reading and reflecting, then this is an entire element of the reflection part. This is what is going to take us to the third session where we are going to try and write. Okay, so that will be there. To give patriotism feelings. Yes, the flag, the symbol that is used is to give us patriotic feeling. But you understand how the WhatsApp forwards get constructed. You know, how is it that certain things, certain messages make sense? So if, and there are a lot of people trying to do this, where they will start by saying, um, they will throw up a challenge or if it is for a youngster, for an older person, they will they will give a lot of respect and say, you must already know this, but, and so on and so forth. So these are important aspects to keep in mind about structure, okay? And I'm not going to get into too much of detail here because I want you to think about it yourself. And I want you to uh, work on these elements, I'm sorry. So I want you to work on these elements of, you know, what we are uh, dealing with. 
and think about how they are. For instance, even with this coronavirus, etc., there are these political biases. There is a confirmation bias, whatever we like. So one of the tasks that I would like you to do is think about the kind of biases that we have and how uh, newspapers or magazine articles or news channels are constantly appealing to them, right? So there is a bias in, um, in, in using UNESCO or un using who, WHO or some esteemed scientist. And I will also give you one, uh, you know, the fake news has a structure that, that uses it. So these are kinds of elements that happen. Uh, I'm going to go to this next part here, functions of language, to come back to this point. Take up any one idea. So my idea is uh, I will give a sentence which says that, and I'm giving the neutral sentence. We, uh, sorry, the lockdown has been extended for two more weeks. That's the sentence. That's the neutral sentence. Can you make it positive? And can some of you write the negative? We will actually you just write the sentence, but you either choose to be positive about it or you have to represent it in a negative light. And we will guess which one is which. How's arrested? Okay. A lot of you are writing neutral sentences. I don't know if they are positive or they are negative in idea. an interesting aspect you know to to talk about how we react hmm yeah Xion. that's a nice one okay i'm going to stop a bit here uh, uh, just after these three people who are currently typing finish 
but my uh, idea is also to see how we are interpreting it, right? So we will go via the one by one of the sentences being stated and see whether we think uh, this is positive or negative. Done? Okay. So the first one is Xion had uh, another two weeks of being house arrested due to lockdown. Is that a negative sentence or a positive sentence? Or a neutral one? Negative. Sorry? Negative. 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 Because of the word arrested. <laughs> Isn't it? Because of the word arrested, it is negative, yes. isn't it? Yes. Right. So yes, we think that house arrest is negative and therefore we will uh, consider it negative, though there are no other adjectives that are focused upon. The second one is lockdown is extended for two more weeks, activity in orange and green zones resume. Negative, neutral, positive. Positive. Pushing. Pushing towards positive, but. Yeah, what is positive? Because it says that activity well, in origin means resume. And I was just not doing that. Is it because. It I think it's positive. Because it says that activity in orange and green zones resume? Yes. So what about if someone is very frightened and says, oh my God, we don't have enough testing. This is such a bad news. Activity in green and orange zones are resuming without us doing number adequate testing. How will that person react to the sentence? For that person, it is a negative. <laughs> yeah. Right. Those right. who are in the red zone. Yeah. So it is, uh, these are kinds of, or even the person who is in a red zone, as you were saying, like, you know, lockdown extended for two more weeks, but activity in RAR, Kash, May, Orange, or Green Zone, May Hota you know, or hoti or whatever. So they might also react to it negatively. So a sentence seems to be just giving facts, but the way that we respond to it will depend on how we have organized information for ourselves. And that is one of the key aspects of reflecting on knowledge, of, of focusing on what is important, what is not important, etc. These are important essentials to keep in mind when you're talking about reflecting on text. As stated by the government, we are to stay indoors for two additional weeks. Mm. This is again a statement of fact. It's very similar. But then depending on each one of us, if we are paranoid, we will be like, ha, acha hua. And if we are the kind who are like, I am so tired of this, it will be like, how sad. So two more weeks of isolation due to corona. Uh, Xion's statement is very clear. It says precaution is better than cure. Two weeks of social distancing will surely do good. It, it, I may not agree with it, but I know that this author is definitely being positive about it. So these are uh, ways of trying to say that I know that for her, it is a positive experience. Whereas in the earlier one, um, of, um, you know, or even in Stephanie's case, the government takes an important decision of extending the lockdown for two more weeks. I know that she considers it important, but I don't know whether she agrees with it or disagrees with it. I don't know whether she wants it or does not want it. So if you're looking at all of these elements, we have to uh, think through, you know, 
uh, think through the entire element of what is happening and uh, we interpret and read in a particular manner. Hethil is like, why don't we try out new, more new recipes given to us uh, in the extra time given to us by the government and get to know our own creativity. And yes, obviously is, um, is, is more positive. Uh, again, there, there are problems here. You could be sarcastic. Uh, and we wouldn't know because it's out of context. Sorry. Uh, India has conducted fewer tests than only Germany, which has conducted the most COVID tests to date. Uh, seems positive, but we don't know. Uh, there could be someone who looks at it and says that, uh, yeah, fewer tests, but look at the percentage of population. And uh, so the, it, it, the interpretation and the way that a matter has been presented are two different things. That's one of the major things that I wanted to also identify out here. You may be writing something that uh, is interpreted differently, but you actually have a different intent of writing. So they are two different things. The story is typing something, so I will wait for that before I go on to the next one. And this will be the last part. So, ma'am, whatever you type or whatever you uh, like, we write or try to send out, it's always going to be criticized by someone. There's always going to be an a misinterpretation of what you're trying to say. Is it? Uh, so, this is the question. When we talk about teaching, reflecting on text, uh, that's a good, very good question. The idea is that a the when and what but talks about in the statement is that the function of language is to organize our experiences and interpersonal mess meanings in a linear and coherent manner. I mean that's according to him one of the definitions of what language as a language can function as. Whether it always is linear is also dependent on the people. OK, so it is that if you talk about uh, talk to native African traditions or the Maori traditions, they may not always be explaining everything. So there are these high context cultures and low context cultures. And the low context ones, they tend to explain, uh, you know, the contextual meaning all the time. And in typically where you want to explain, um, you know, something, uh, in certain other cultures, it is ex it is expected. Yeah. So, for instance, if I'm doing a restricted code, uh, if you take up something of Bernstein, and we will do these as examples in the early, later classes, but um, there's a there's a theorist called Basil Bernstein, and he talks of elaborate versus restricted codes. Now, I'll give you one example of a restricted code. A restricted code would be where uh, Mm, a, a person comes into the club into a into a room and says attention now depending on the context depending on the person's status depending on whether the audience knows this person or not attention will be paid attention to in different ways it could be in a PT exercise classroom where it is it is in a room, it is a it is in a you know outside, and the, when the person says attention, it means stand to attention and stand at ease and attention. If it were in a place where they were doing uh, where they were sitting in the examination hall and someone walked in and said attention, it means that I have an announcement to make. It, if it were at, uh, you know, a child coming in and, uh, you know, screaming out to his friends, attention, it is more in terms of, you know, showing off that I got a new word. It could be all different kinds depending on the context. Now, the one thing that in a place, if I take up something like a PT exercise, uh, maybe they are in a constrained space of a gym or something and the, they're doing exercise and the PT sir says attention. That's a restricted code. It's a restricted code because 
I only am using that, but there are certain ramifications for that where there are certain actions I have to do as a student. I have to stand at attention. I have to be in uniform lines. I have to be uh, following a regimen. There are so many things that I should know to do prior to that word attention. And it's a very restricted code. It is available only to the people who knew what this word was, who had exposure to this kind of training and this kind of context, right? Now, an elaborate code would be where I am explaining everything. And a very simple way of doing this, and a lot of Indians actually use a lot of elaborate codes, would be... Um, Okay, so someone walks in the bus stop. I, I'm sure you've had this exam, ex, uh, you know, things uh, where someone walks past and uh, or is standing next to you and says, "Ghadi hai kya?" Have you heard this expression, "Ghadi hai kya?" Yes, ma'am. Yes. And what does it mean? Why does this person ever ask you, "Ghadi hai kya?" What's the time? What's the time? Why don't they just ask you time kya hai? Yes. <laughs> and it's it boggles the mind of all these foreigners when they're like, Khadi hai kya? Like, are you wanting to steal my watch? See my watch? What is it? Why are you asking me about that? Uh, there are these people who will, and so this is a kind of code which is restricted. And then you will say, ha. Huh? And you might say, ha, huh? and the person says, Same dekh ke bata sakte ho kya? and something like that. And then you, you will say, ha, huh? kya time hua? And you actually have conversations where you can hear people, you know, the first time he said, ghadi hai kya? the person who had, who knew the lingo, so to speak, would have said, uh, ek bajne wala hai. Okay, so they would have said that. But the person who does not know this is like, yes. Then the other person says, can you see the time? And then you're like, yes. Can you tell me? And then you would be like, OK, it is nearing 1 o'clock. So they didn't have access to the restricted code. And so they needed a lot of elaboration. Uh, in elaborated codes, it would be, and I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but I had this one post office experience that I just love recounting where someone came in and said, you know, generally I wake up so early in the morning and I have everything ready and I have my pencil pouch and my tiffin box and everything all organized because I have to get out in a rush. And generally that happens. But today what happened is my alarm clock did not go off on time and I was in such a rush. And I'm sitting, standing in the post office, filling out my money order form listening to this conversation, you know, being directed to me. And I'm like, why am I getting this? Who are you? Why do I need to know your routine? So can you tell me what this conversation was gearing towards? Um, I'm already late. Can you let me take your turn and go first? Yeah, that could have been a possibility. This person just wanted to borrow my pen. So, in that sense, I had this long, rambling conversation that I was listening to for, and you know, you've come across these kinds of people, right? You've come across yes. these kinds of wonderful characters who will never get to the point, and you're like, just tell me what the task is. And you're wondering what is happening. So there are these other people who will give you these elaborate quotes, who will explain everything, who will say, who will contextualize the context, I mean, who will contextualize the information for you and explain everything. Now, why are these important is that, um, to go back to your question, are we always going to get misinterpreted? No, that's what we are trying to teach people. We're trying to teach people that you thought when you read a sentence like, uh, India has conducted fewer tests than only Germany, which has conducted the most COVID tests to date. I'm just reading the second last one. But it's a statement of fact. I cannot therefore say that Marisa is, is criticizing India. I also cannot say and deduce from this that Marisa is 
praising India. I could understand that there are so many kinds of tests done. I have reasons to understand from this because of the word only in that sentence and only Germany. That India, definitely she thinks that India has done a lot of tests. I don't know whether she thinks it is enough. I don't know whether she thinks it is uh, adequate. But I, because I have my own personal experience and knowledge and understanding, we look at it and react. That's what all your Facebook posts and Twitter posts and replies and trolls are all about. Your misunderstanding of the information. So the reflective of text is just asking you, can we be conscious of it? Can we be cautious about it? And can we teach others to be conscious and cautious about it? You know, that's all. Uh, we will always have some misunderstandings. And it's nice, I think, you know, sometimes to be misunderstood and to have a misunderstanding because then you will learn how to be better in your positioning and presentation of facts. Uh, so in your writing, you will be able to be a lot more conscious about how someone else can misinterpret what you're saying. So you said that house arrested, I mean, uh, red and green zones, sorry, what? Sorry, orange and green zones are activities that are allowed to resume is positive. And then you suddenly realize, oh, someone else may be thinking of it as negative. So in my writing, what is it I can do to make you think like that? So one aspect of this is not just when we are saying reading and reflecting on text. It is not just about the fact that uh, it should it's, it's not just about the fact that we want to understand this as how we read and interpret others, but also about how we should be careful in our own writing if we don't want to give some miscommunication. So that is what public relations is about. That is what about teaching other students and children is about. That's how we could be formulating our means. So that is where this came from. It is not about that, will it always be misinterpreted? No, the idea is to teach you what are the strategies and tricks that are being used in order to sometimes generate, purposefully misguide you. And, and misguiding others, it's as at times very useful. Uh, think of every detective fiction. Its entire purpose of a detective novel is to mislead the reader. If I did not mislead you, there would be no fun. If, I, if in the horror story, you already knew that that old man who was having the lantern and who always came at all odd times was not the villain of the story, half of the thrill of it would be gone, you know? So, there are, there is a use of misleading, of misguiding. The idea is to try and see what are the structures that enable this misguiding and misinterpretation. And on that note, in the last five minutes that we have and that I knew that we would have, uh, I want you to uh, mm -hmm. wait. Yeah. This last part, this is just four sentences, okay? But think through, there are these sentences, only I like him. Uh, I'll, I'll increase the font size maybe. Okay. So I, I hope you can see it better now, but only I like him. I only like him. I like only him and the ultimate Indianism. I like him only. So if you take up the first three sentences, do they all mean the same thing? No. No. What no. does the first one say? No. Yeah, yeah. What does the first one say? Oh. That others she might own. hate him, but I like him. But I'm the oh, only I'm one that likes him. Nice, likes. kind, generous person. That you know, he is so horrible, and I still, still am kind and nice enough to like him. Okay. 
or that he is very misunderstood and only I like him. What about the second one? I only like him. Uh, my, uh, I have a reason to why they like him. I, I only like him because he is this way. Because he is that I way. only like him will be that there is a reason. Yeah, like there might be a reason behind it. Like I only like him because he is sweet or I only like him because he is smart. So, <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. All right. I like only him. No one else. Yeah. <laughs> So this is the opposite of the first one, no? Only I like him. Now this is, the first one is like, I am very kind and generous and this guy is a horrible case and only I like him. The third one is like, I am so picky and choosy and, uh, you know, this is the only person I like. Or maybe it could be, she has no other option. <laughs> uh, no, in, in, in terms of sentence structures, actually, it doesn't say that I uh, or like only him is, uh, yeah, it could be that the other options are so bad that this is the only guy who stands out, you know, only chicken, only I, I can only, I mean, only palak paneer is available here, you know, so then you're like, ah, uh, I mean, there are other options, but nothing really excites you. So yeah, it could be that. The second one is not what you pointed out. The second one is actually a different way. It, let me read it out in a different way. So, uh, only I like him. That's the first sentence. That's how it is written. Okay. So, only is basically supposed to be whatever follows only is uh, emphasized. So, only I like him. The second one is... Uh, I only like him, okay? So I only like him. I don't love him. I don't adore him. I don't cherish him. I only like him. The third one is I like only him. And that's the kind of difference. And the moment I read it, I think immediately it strikes you. So, you know, when a child says, I want only that bicycle. Uh, it's two minutes. I'll be done in two minutes. Okay. I like only him. So uh, that would be a sentence that comes through in. Uh, yeah. So that comes through in the uh, uh, element of where the sentence construction goes. Why am I done this? Because when you were asking me, do, does it mean that it gets misinterpreted, etc.? Mm. Again, these like the tenses, they are not always conscious, but they do create an impression. And the idea is for you to be conscious of how these impressions get created. So how is a sentence structured? How is, what is a choice of language that is being used? How can that create these gaps in understanding? That is the point. So um, I'll end with this last part, this one last example. Uh, I don't know whether I gave it last lecture. I don't think I did. It is 100 degrees outside. When I say that, which country do I belong to? Not India. Yeah. What is the temperature? Uh, what is the, the, what is the, you know, what is the measurement scale that I'm using? when I'm saying it's 100 degrees outside. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. What age group can I introduce this text to? Can I introduce this text to a third standard child?
for the child to be able to understand this huh? uh, in india you could in, you could introduce it to someone probably in the 6th or 7th grade where they've already been uh, introduced to the concept of celsius and fahrenheit as two different scales correct right so though the sentence is simple when i am using it i will have to fabricate the text to be able to teach it to a third standard child i may want to change that 100 degrees to 37 degrees i may want to change the way that it is said to just saying it is very hot outside or i may want to decide to introduce it in sixth standard not because there's a complication in sentence structure but there's a complication in the cognitive thinking load and these are very important aspects to think about when we are talking about reflecting the te context so it's about when the when to use authenticated and authentic and fabricated material what is the level of reasoning what kind of understanding should i have to give to the child because for a child of third standard 100 degrees is 100 degrees they going to just say ah it's very hot but they going to say are lekin 28 degrees mein hamara ye halat hota hai to 100 degrees mein wo jeete kaise hai they going to ask those kinds of questions uh yeah the statement can be a hyperbole the statement can also be and this is also true the statement could be in science fiction where it literally might have been 100 degrees outside celsius you know it could be mars and yeah it could be hyperbole it could be mars it could be a statement of fact uh and it could be a different context and do you understand that just this one sentence of the word 100 degrees you get so many interpretations and the point is not that i would um uh, that one is right or the other is wrong the point is that as reflective teachers where will we do that journey to the center of earth it was much more than 100 degrees celsius <laughs> yes so yes definitely and uh, you know all of that uh, to to those extent rebecca is those kinds of questions that you can have with just one sentence which is one trigger it becomes cognitive load a kind of imaginative understanding again for a child to understand imagination third, third standard child to think about 100 degree celsius and to appreciate the hyperbole may not happen the child may not understand hyperbole so when do we introduce hyperbole when do we introduce metaphors these are kinds of questions that we will have to deal with the next class i am not going to do reading i am going to take some of these activities that i have already indicated to you that you will be doing in the class uh, from now to saturday on uh, i will i will share the ppt uh, sorry 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 yeah so i'll do the ppt and uh, what we will do in the next class is actually do very quick writing exercises and i'll do some polls with you all for that and um, i i don't know how many of you have seen journey to the center of the earth but if you haven't then it's a nice movie to enjoy during your lockdown in addition to as kasturi says strengthening our bond with our family or breaking them either way all right thank you all it's 15 i'm very conscious it's lunch time <laughs> or the book yes yes i mean personally i would prefer the book but i don't know whether you will have access to the book but you will definitely have access to the film so uh thank you very much i will put all of this up on the uh google classroom and uh, do continue interacting and please ask questions and so all these questions that you were asking today was in that sense a slightly more technical session because i was trying to get you to think about tenses the next one will be more uh, reflective so we will start using some of the other things so each session will be there no thank you all so we will end the session with that okay. thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you thank you, you. have